Hi everyone, in this video we are gonna make 5 hydroxy vanilla. As this project is apparently a somewhat difficult synthesis for the emitter chemist, I would like to show you my process, experiment and observations because I've already done this synthesis in 20 batch before and had a somewhat good yield as you can see. I can't wait it because it's still wet, but the product is similar to what literature describes, reacts the same to solvents and have the same solubility, etc. etc. I'm now looking for TLC plate to verify my product. This video is probably not absolutely exact, but it could help you to do your own research on this product. For this synthesis, our precursor is 5 iodovanilline, which I made in the previous video following Tylab process. I recommend you to check my previous video if you want to know how to make it. This process affords almost pure 5 iodovanilline with a very good yield. Let's get started. In a clean round bottom flask placed on a heating mantle is added 10 grams of 5 iodovanilline. Then I'm gonna wash the rod I used, the funnel and the container with distilled water. On top of that, we will add 20 grams of potassium hydroxide in solution in 150 milliliters of water. While it dissolves, you can add a steel bar and start stirring. When the potassium hydroxide has fully dissolved, you can add it directly in your flask. This is how it looks before reflux and before catalyst addition. Then, a little bit of copper sulfate and copper powder catalyst are added. I ended up by using 0.3 grams of copper powder and 0.65 grams of copper sulfate. A reflux condenser is placed on top and the reflux is carried for 24 hours according to literature. I will try less time because I already did it for 24 hours and had a very good yield as you seen in the beginning of the video. As I used potassium hydroxide instead of sodium hydroxide because boiling my precious iodovanilline with a strong base for a long time worried me a bit, potassium hydroxide is more gentle but we might have to wait a little bit longer to ensure reaction will be complete when we will stop the reflux period. Doing it with less time is an interesting experiment, but probably not the best way to do it. Some insulation is then placed on the flask. Just with a little window like that we can check the process going. The reaction is then set to reflux for several hours. This is how the reaction looks after 2 hours of reflux. Here it's almost 6 hours in and nothing has really changed. After 7 hours I decided to cut the reaction here and try now the acidification. Insulation is removed and the mixture is left to stand until it cools to room temperature. First, reaction is placed in an ice bath with stirring. Dilute sulfuric acid is then added slowly into our reaction vessel. If you use too much acid, your product will not crystallize properly in the next steps and will come as an oil. Do not acidify too much, we just need for it to be slightly acidic. I used sulfuric acid as it's not volatile and will not corrode my oven during the drying process.
Now the mixture is acidic and we can process. When the mixture has been acidified, everything is dumped into a large container. Wash the flask with distilled water. Mixture is then placed in an oven until complete dryness. When everything is dried, it's time to perform the almost final extraction. A cotton ball is inserted in an isobar addition funnel. Don't take too small cotton ball as a large one offers a larger contact pad and avoid plugging. This is followed by the dark craft from earlier. On top of that, I'm gonna add a cotton ball, like that the dripping DCM will have a better repartition on all the surface. Also, when we're gonna pour clean DCM here, no crap will go into the side of the isobar addition funnel. This is not really necessary, but I prefer to do like this. Then, a clean and dry round bottom flask is placed in a heating mantle. On top of that is placed our addition funnel, which has been loaded with the dark crap from the last step. And on top of that again, after adding grease on all the joints and cleaning these joints, is added a reflex condenser. And then, to complete our crazy skyscraper, we're gonna add a funnel. Like that we can add DCM without spilling too much everywhere. Let me open the windows before DCM addition and let's go. As you can see, my DCM is kinda pink or purple, I don't know, but it's due to a contamination and you will see it later in the video. As you can see, DCM has already started to carry some of our products. Remember that you can add so much DCM as we will be able to recover it later. In my case, I used almost 150 ml of it. Then, as always, insulation is placed on the flask. Before putting aluminum everywhere, a little bit of explanations. Here, we are boiling DCM in the flask. DCM vapors will climb here, condense in the reflux condenser just on top, and go here. When going through our dried crop, it will carry a little bit of 5-hydroxyvanillin and drip it in the receiving flask. As DCM is evaporating from here, clean DCM will continue to go here, condense in the reflux condenser on top, drip on the mix, etc, etc. This process is called a continuous solvent extraction and this will allow us to extract our product and separating it from all the salt and other residues from previous steps. Remember that it's very important to add very good insulation, otherwise DCM vapors will condense before going to the reflux condenser and they are not going to drip on our product. I will also use this stopper at the end of the reflux condenser and the end of the tubing to the windows because I hate getting high on DCM vapors. After a few hours, no more crystals are visible on the side of the addition funnel. So we will stop the reflux here. On the sides of your flask, you will see some crystals forming. If you want to see some really big crystals, check my Instagram as I had really big and creepy crystals in my training batch. DCM is then removed by distillation. Here you can see the red contamination in our DCM and I suppose it can be elemental iodine being released by the sodium iodide or potassium iodide from earlier steps in presence of our dilute sulfuric acid. DCM vapors are boiled off and our product is transferred to the water phase. Mixture is then allowed to cool and some solid chunks have already started to precipitate out. After placing the mix to the fridge to ensure perfect crystallization, 
we are left with our final 5 hydroxy vanillin weighting 3.9 grams that's a 35% yield after grinding it and adding to my training batch yield I'm left with 9.2 grams and we can proceed to myristinaldehyde synthesis that's all for today's video thanks for watching please like share and subscribe and see you next time